Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Um, I'm streaming whilst doing this video reaction, but welcome back to a reaction video. I, can't, I don't know what I'm saying. Um, yeah, this is was suggested on the live stream and the video is the simplest math problem no one can solve. This is like a new video on YouTube at the moment that's blowing up. It's been out for like five days and it's been all over my recommended. I was going to react to it before, but then someone suggested it and... By the way, I'm going to go to the... Um, Don the donos after the, the video. I don't want to disrupt the video. Uh, but yeah, I mean, okay, my first stream in about three months, four months, maybe longer. But I'm enjoying it. It's been the worst stream ever. And people are still enjoying it. So I mean, I'm loving it, man. But we're going to get into this video. Shout out to my Instagram, my Twitter. Links in the description for those interested. Save my Patreon. Links to all there for those interested. <laughs> this is so awkward. Um, let's just get into this. The simple math problem no one can solve. Hopefully my camera isn't in the right place as well. Oh, math, not math. Sorry, sorry. Mathematics. One that young... This is the most dangerous problem in mathematics. One that young mathematicians are warned not to waste their... Is it pi? Is it how like, they, make, they can't find the next number for pi? Their time the on. It's a simple conjecture that not even the world's best mathematicians have been able to solve. Paul Erdős, a famous mathematician, said... Mathematics is not yet ripe enough for such questions. Here's how it works. Pick a number, any number. <laughs> Seven? Good choice. Okay, we're gonna... Up if you see me laughing in the video, it's because I'm looking at the chat and they're just being trolls, man. <laughs> Fucking man. Apply two rules. If the number is odd, we multiply by three and add yeah, one. Pick a that. number, any number. Seven? Five. Good choice. Okay, we're gonna apply two so rules. If the number is odd, we multiply by three and add one. So three times seven is 21, plus one is 22. If the number is even, we divide by two. So 22 divided by 11. two is 11. Come on. Now we keep applying these two rules. 11 is odd, so we multiply by three, 33, 34. and add one, 34. Even, divide by two, 16. 17. Oh, odd. Multiply by 3, 51, add 1, 52. 52. Even. Divide by 2, 26. 26. Still even. Divide by 2, 13. 13. Odd. So we multiply by 40. 3, 39, add 1, and that's 40, which is even. So we 20. divide by 2, 20. Divide by 2, 10. 10. Divide by 2, 5. 5. Odd. 16. Multiply by 3, 15, add 1, 16. Divide by 2, that's 8. And then 4, Four. 2, and 1. Now, 1 is odd, so we multiply by 3 and add 1, which equals 4. But 4 goes to 2 goes to 1, so we're in a loop, and the lowest number is 1. Now, the conjecture is this. Every positive fuck? integer, if you apply these rules, will eventually end up in the 4, 2, 1 loop. This is commonly called the Collatz conjecture after German mathematician Lothar Collatz, who may have come up with it in the 1930s. But the problem has Wait, many I'm origins. I'm spinning right now. <laughs> this is plain stories mind. and many names. It's also known as the Ulam conjecture, Kakutani's problem, Thwaites conjecture, Hass's algorithm, the Syracuse problem, and simply 3n plus one. Why is 3x plus one so famous? Among professional mathematicians, maybe it's not famous but infamous, in the sense that if someone actually admits in public that they're working on it, then there's something wrong with them. <laughs> the numbers you get by applying 3x plus 1 are called hailstone numbers because they go up and down like hailstones in a thundercloud, but eventually they all fall down to 1, or at least we think they do. You can think of the numbers as representing the height Math hard, that's what I'm thinking right now. I'm just, you know the Homer Simpson when he's like clapping the, the instrument and it's like the monkey clapping it in his head? That's me right now. <laughs> I'm trying to take it in and I'm just sort of like, yeah, okay, this this is <laughs> math. Of the ground in meters. Big brain. So a number like 26 would start 26 meters above the ground. And if you apply 3x plus 1, it rises up as high as 40 meters. And in total, it takes 10 steps to get to 1. So 10 is called its total stopping time. But take the very next number, 27, and it bounces around all over the place. In fact, it climbs all the way up to 9,232. As an altitude, that is higher than Mount Everest, before it too falls back to the ground. In total, it takes 111 steps 
for 27 to get down to 1 and end up in the 4 to 1 loop. The paths that different numbers take vary so widely, even numbers right next to each other. So how do you even start to make progress on this problem? Well, honestly, mathematicians struggled. People just decided that this was something invented by the Soviets to slow down US science, and it was doing a good job at it because everybody's sitting there <laughs> twiddling their- Can you hear those sounds in my earphones? <laughs> my heart rate right now. I'm hearing like some weird noises. The thumbs and making no progress on this trivial thing that you can tell school children. Jeffrey Ligarius is the world authority on 3x plus one. The first time I met him, I was a, a senior in college and he pulled me aside and he said, don't do this. Don't work on this problem. If you want to have a career, <laughs> do not start it. spending time writing about this or publishing any papers about this. Do real math for a while to establish yourself. But imagine you're the guy to actually figure, figure it out, man. Like, if you figure this out, you are like the Don. You're like the top guy. Everyone loves you. And you're just probably the most famous guy. Maybe not the most famous mathematician. One of the most famous mathematicians living now, but maybe of all time. I mean, you never know, mate. You never know. Alex Kontorovich didn't listen. He and Yakov Sinai looked at the paths of the hailstone numbers. Were there any patterns? Well, obviously, all of them end up at one. But what about the paths they take to get there? The pattern is randomness. Here is the sequence of a large number chosen at random. The graph peaks and then drops so low that you can't really see what's happening at this scale. But if you take the logarithm, you find this wiggly graph with a downward trend. It looks kind of like the stock market on a bad day. And this is no coincidence. Both are examples of geometric Brownian motion. That means if you take the log and remove the linear trend, the fluctuations are random. It's like flipping a coin each step. If the coin is heads, the line goes up. Tails, it goes down. 3x plus 1 is just like the random wiggles of the stock market. Over long enough periods, the stock market tends to trend upwards, while 3x plus 1 trends down. Another way to analyze 3x plus 1 is by looking at the leading digit of each number in a sequence. Here are the hailstone numbers starting with 3 as the seed. And we can count up how many numbers start with a 1, how many start with a 2, how many start with a 3, and so on to make a histogram. We can do the same thing for the sequence that starts with 4, that's a short one, and for the sequences that start with 5, 6, and 7. Again, 4 is just like the cursed number. <laughs> no matter what, with 4 you just get the same game start right now. <laughs> There's so many people in here, what the fuck? For each sequence, we're just counting up how many numbers start with each digit, one through nine, and adding that to our histogram. If you keep doing this for more and more numbers, eventually the histogram settles into a stable it does pattern. Like set the same point though, for yeah. the first billion sequences, you'll find one is by far the most common leading digit. 30% of all numbers start with one. Around 17.5% start with 2, 12% start with 3, and the frequency decreases for higher digits. Fewer than 5% of all the numbers start with 9. Now this pattern is not unique to 3x plus 1. It actually comes up everywhere, from the populations of countries to the value of companies, all the physical constants and the Fibonacci numbers, just to name a few. The distribution is known as Benford's Law. And Never heard of it, it is life. even used to detect fraud. If all the numbers on your income- I look so lost. I, I am lost. This is too early for math. In the US, it's like eight o'clock, nine o'clock in the morning. It's like three o'clock here and I'm still struggling. If tax forms obey Benford's <laughs> law, then, well, you're probably being honest. If not, you may be hiding something. In elections, Benford's law can be used to spot irregularities, though you have to apply it correctly. Benford's law works best when the numbers involved span several orders of magnitude, as they do for 3x plus 1. But Benford's law can't tell us whether all numbers will end up in the 4 to 1 loop or not. For that, we need a different sort of analysis. At first glance, it seems strange that when you apply 3x plus 1, all numbers should end up at 1. I mean, consider that there are the same number of odd and even numbers, strange, but though. odd numbers are more than tripled, while even numbers are only cut in half. Therefore, it seems like every sequence on average should grow, not shrink. But here's the catch. 
Every time you multiply an odd number by three and then add one, it will always become an even number. And that means the next step is to divide by two. So odd numbers are not actually tripled by three X plus one, they're increased by a factor of about three over two. I'm neglecting the plus one because it's insignificant for large numbers. And three halves is actually the most an odd number can grow in one step. Think of the path from one odd number in a sequence to the next three odd number. Three halves is going to go f four. So anyway, up by four, four. Isn't it? After multiplying by three and adding one, you have an even number. And 50% of the time, dividing by two brings you back to an odd number. Three, so two, you're three halves, three halves. That is fucking weird. <laughs> Eight, which is three halves of 15. What the fuck? This is the most mind-boggling thing I've ever looked at. I just feel like I'm the most dumb, the dumbest person in the world. But a quarter of the time, you can divide by four before you get to the next odd number. So for a quarter of numbers, the next one in the sequence will be three-fourths of its initial value. An eighth of the time, you can divide by eight before getting to the next odd number. And a sixteenth of the time, you can divide by sixteen, and so on. If you take the geometric mean, you find, on average, to get from one odd number to the next one, you multiply by three over four, which is less than one. So statistically speaking, 3x plus 1 sequences are more likely to shrink than grow. Take 341, for example. Multiply by 3 and add 1, you get 1024, which you can divide by 2, and then divide by 2 again, and again, and again, and again, 10 times in total until you're down to 1. One way to visualize these paths of numbers in 3x plus 1 is simply to show how each number connects to the next one in its sequence. This is called a directed graph. It looks like a tree, or a series of little streams that flow into each other. If the conjecture is true, it means that every single number is connected to this graph. Every tiny stream all the way out to infinity... If I'm getting a phone call from my girlfriend. Maria, do you want to be on stream? Well... <laughs> Hello? <laughs> She's trolling me. She's actually trolling me because I'm on stream. You think you're funny, don't you? We need to go soon. It's closing at 8 9. What's closing at 8 9? I'll, I'll be. F Guys, she's trying to get me off stream. I'm sorry, I have to go after this video. <laughs> it's not even. It's like six hours away. I have USA education. I'm not good enough for this. I have UK education. And I'm not good enough for this, but I, don't, I, I, was, a bad, I was bad at maths. I, I passed for some reason, but... Eventually flows into the massive river of 4, 2, 1. Some mathematicians have modified this visualization by rotating the graph at each number, anti-clockwise if it's an odd number, and clockwise if it's even. And then you end up with a structure that looks like a coral or seaweed. And by adjusting the degree of rotation for odd and even numbers, you can create these beautiful organic looking shapes. It's a flower. Now there are two ways the conjecture could be false. There could be a number somewhere, some seed, that starts a sequence of numbers that grows to infinity. For whatever reason, it doesn't obey the same numerical gravity as all of the other numbers. Another possibility is there exists a sequence of numbers that forms a closed loop. All the numbers in this loop would be unconnected to the main graph. But thus far, no loop or sequence that shoots off to infinity has been found. And not for lack of trying, mathematicians have tested by brute force every single number up to 2 to the 68. That's 295 quintillion, 147 quadrillion, 905 trillion, 179 billion, 352 million, 825,856 numbers. We know for certain that every single one of those numbers eventually comes back down to one. What the fuck? We have tested nearly 300. How do people have enough time for this? <laughs> who, who, like, who has this sort of time? What the Quintillion fuck? numbers, and none of them disproves the conjecture. In fact, given this information, mathematicians calculate that any loop other than- Surely it gets to a point where you're just like, yeah, okay, it's just always going back to one. There's no point even doing this. 
it's just inevitable to go back to 1. 421 must be at least right? 186 billion numbers long. So it seems pretty likely that the conjecture is true, but this doesn't prove it. One way mathematicians have attempted to prove it is <laughs> by a making a scatterplot with all the seed numbers on the x-axis and a number from each seed's sequence on the y-axis. Now, if you can show that in every 3x plus 1 sequence, there is a number that is smaller than the original seed, well, then you have proven the Collatz conjecture. Because whatever number you pick, you know it will at some point get smaller. And that smaller number, as a seed, also gets smaller, and so on down to 1. Meaning the only way any sequence can end is in the 4, 2, 1 loop. This has not yet been shown. But in 1976, Riho Terras was able to show that almost all... This is live. I'm literally, I'm doing this, this reaction live, which is, I'm, I regret because I'm making myself look even more stupid. At least if it was a, a reaction without the chat, I could sort of edit it to make me seem a bit smarter. I can't. I'm just clueless. I'm just seeing numbers and it's just like, bong, bong, bong. <laughs> all that sequences reach a point below their initial value. In yeah, I guess it is common knowledge in a sense. But just the idea of it does baffle 1979, me. this limit was... Like it does make sense, but it doesn't. I don't know. Nothing makes sense in this world. Reduced now. with almost all numbers going to less than x to the power of 0. 0.869. And then in 1994, <laughs> it was further lowered to less than x to the power of 0. 0.7925. In this case, the term almost all numbers has a technical mathematical definition. It means that as the numbers you're looking at go to infinity, the fraction that end up under the curve goes to 1. Then, in 2019, one of the world's greatest living mathematicians, Terry Tao, was able to show 3x plus 1. <laughs> oh, I love, wait, is, it, is this him then? The guy whose channel is, because I love how it's, sort of, it's on him and I'm thinking, okay, it's this guy, the guy that we've been watching the whole time. And it's just cut. Like, you just sort of give the idea, okay, it's this guy. And then one of the world's greatest living Ooh. mathematicians, Terry Tao, <laughs> was able to show 3x plus 1 obeys even stricter criteria. He showed almost all numbers will end up smaller than any arbitrary function f of x, so long as that function goes to infinity as x goes to infinity. But the function can rise as slowly as you like, so log x is an example, or log log x works too, or log 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 x. Log, 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 what log. this means is for almost all numbers, you can guarantee that there is an arbitrarily small number somewhere in its sequence. In a public talk he gave in 2020, Terry Tao said, this is about as close as one can get to the Collatz conjecture without actually solving it. This is an impressive result, but it's still not a proof. So why can't we prove the conjecture true? Could it be because it's not true? I mean, everyone is trying to prove it true, which means almost no one is looking for counterexamples. I, it happened to me just uh, two years ago where there was, a, there was something I was trying to prove that I was trying for three years to prove. And I couldn't get well. it to work. And Imagine then I wasting found a three years. I say wasting. Imagine spending three years and then you just get nothing. Imagine how much of your life is just wasted for nothing. I mean, if you're the guy who figures it out, cool, but like... <laughs> yeah, For nice. example, and then I realized what the correct... The idea of that happening just does not sit well ...statement should have been, and then a month later I proved the correct statement. Maybe we should be spending more energy looking for counterexamples than we're currently spending. I mean, remember how the number 27 grows all the way to 9,232? That's ridiculous. Here is a plot <laughs> of crazy. seed numbers up to 10,000, with the largest number reached for each seed plotted on the y-axis. The y-axis stops at 100,000, but not all numbers can be shown at this scale. The seed 9,663, for example, climbs as high as 27 million. And as yet, no one has proven why a number couldn't down. just shoot off to infinity. And it would take only one to disprove the conjecture. Or some set of numbers could be part of a loop, not connected to the main graph. As far as we know, there is only one loop, 421. But something strange happens if you include negative numbers. Off. Applying the okay. same 3x plus 1 rules as before, there is not one loop, not two loops, but three independent loops of numbers. And they start at low values like minus 17 and minus five. 
why should there be disconnected loops on the negative side of the number line, but not on the positive side? Now, one of the most convincing pieces of evidence supporting the conjecture is Terry Tao's proof that almost all numbers have a number in their sequence that is arbitrarily small. But proving that almost all numbers obey this criteria isn't the same thing as proving that all numbers do. How many numbers between 1 and 100 are perfect squares? The answer is 10. So 10% 10 of numbers up to 100 are perfect squares. How many numbers between 1 and 1,000 are perfect squares? The answer is 31. So only 3.1% of the numbers up to 1,000 are perfect squares. Oh, I thought I was going to say 10% the whole time. <laughs> and the higher you go, the smaller yes. this percentage becomes, such that in the limit, you could say almost all numbers are not perfect squares. The fraction of numbers that are not perfect squares goes to 1 as x okay. goes to infinity. Down. And yet we know... Oh, that's crazy how 10 out of 100 better than 100 out of 10,000. Actually, it's not, though. It isn't. Is it? 10 out of 100. 100. Yeah, it is. It does sound a lot. There are an infinite number of perfect squares, and we know exactly Chuck where they are. Years ago. <laughs> now, we've <laughs> tested by brute force all numbers up to 2 to the 68, and they all obey the Collatz conjecture. And you might be thinking that, well, we should have found a counterexample by this point. But on the scale of all numbers, 2 to the 68 is nothing. I mean, the Paglia conjecture, proposed in 1919 by George Paglia, asserted that the majority of natural numbers up to any given number have an odd number of prime factors. The conjecture was eventually proven false by C. Brian Hasselgrove in 1958, when he identified a counterexample. What's remarkable is the value of this counterexample was 1.845 times 10 to the 361. That's some 10 to the 340 times bigger than all the numbers checked for 3x plus 1. One way to think about 3x plus 1 is as though it's a simple program run on a Turing machine. The seed number is the input to the machine. So in this picture, 2 to the 68 is simply an input tape 68 squares long. You can think of them as a string of ones and zeros, or black and white squares. Saying that the machine has transformed every input up to this 68 square tape down to 1 should not give you a lot of confidence that it will do so for all inputs. In fact, it's fairly simple to calculate a number that shows any arbitrary behavior. British guy malfunctions whilst learning about maths is going to be the title of this video. What's the title of this video that I'm doing? Because I don't... Some of it, some bits of it are like getting into my head, but then sort of flying away. I just don't know. Maths is just impossible to learn, man. It's not impossible at all, but for me it is. ...you like, so long as it is finite. If you want a number that increases by 3 over 2 5 consecutive times, you can calculate that number. If you want a number that climbs by 3 over 2 10 times in a row, or 100 times, or 1000 times, you can easily calculate those numbers. But after the finite section you specify, you have no more control, and every number that has ever been tested always falls to 1. If there is a counterexample, it's That's virtually so impossible that someone's going to guess it. And the space of all possibilities is too big to search exhaustively by brute force. Two to the thousand is not a searchable space. So if we're going to find it, we have to find it by some intelligent process and not by guess and check. I had been on team 3x plus 1 for 20 years. Team <laughs> 2. And then... Been <laughs> fucking out. This point... Is it got that bad you resorted to being on teams? Come on, man. You're not down that bad. You, <laughs> Uh, I, I realized that, like, Poor what, do we really know? Do we, what, what? Oh, God. It's very hard to prove a theorem that's false. <laughs> this is egg And so, could it be that everyone's struggling to prove this thing because it's not actually true? And Probably isn't. 2 to the 60 is not a lot of evidence. And even the statistical version is maybe true and not evidence for the non existence of a divergent trajectory somewhere in the 3x plus 1 sequence. Of course, there is another option, and that is that we'll never know. That the Probably problem not. is undecidable. I mean, it's kind of like pi, isn't it? Is it they're probably at the same degree, but pi, they're always trying to figure out the next number. And it's just, it just goes on and goes on. And isn't it like a reward for the person who can mathematically like find the next number, like actually find it? It's like a £10,000 or a million pound reward or something like that. It's probably just the same sort of degree. Maths is just... It is, at the end of the day, it's just annoying, because you can't ever figure out anything. Well, you can, to know what I'm saying. But so many things are just like... 
it just goes on and on and on and it's just it pisses me off man in 1987 john off. conway created a generalization of 3x plus 1. it was a mathematical machine that he called fractran and he was able to show this machine is Turing complete, which means it can do anything a modern computer can do. But it also means that it's subject to the halting problem, a chance that the machine never stops running and so doesn't give you an output. And this does not prove that 3x plus 1 is also subject to the halting problem, but it is possible that given what we know, we may never prove the Collatz conjecture true or false. You're gonna be taught in school that we know a bunch of stuff, and there, it's a it's a lie. They're all lies. Here's this stupid little problem. Come on, really? We can't solve this, really? You know, it just shows math is hard. If anything, it shows that just all the bit. things that we can solve are miracles. We have no right to have solutions to all these other problems. For my whole life. I've thought of numbers as these incredibly regular things, full of patterns, symmetry, and repetition. But what I'm realizing only now is just how peculiar numbers really are. You can see this most clearly in the choral representation. From a simple mathematical operation comes something intricate, organic looking, and thus far intractable to us. Do all numbers connect to this structure? Or is there some unique filament, a spindly little thread that doesn't connect to any of this, that runs off to infinity? And why is it so hard to tell? I think that's why Paul Erdos said, mathematics is not yet ripe enough for such questions. <laughs> what I love about 3x idea. plus 1 is to understand idea. what it means. I now, is it not? Oh. Brilliant is a website. Shout out from getting his money. This is a recent video, so you know how it is. Get your bread, bro. If you're interested, links are in the description. I've just malfunctioned. The production of this video is insane. It's a really well put together video. It's just something for me, like, I'm just naturally slow, as you all know. <laughs> very, very slow. So this was just like. <laughs> well, I need to find a meme. Homer Simpson Monkey. Homer Simpson monkey brain. <laughs> this is me throughout this whole video, man. <laughs> I might just put this in the thumbnail as well. Just <laughs> oh, my I passed maths. I don't know how. My math teacher, be sure you learn this. You, you, you'll be using it daily. Yeah, man. This is delight. This is a delightful exploration of Collatz conjecture. Thank you. I particularly liked just how pretty the visualizations become when you play with the adding rotations for evens and odds. There was definitely some satisfying pictures and like clips and stuff. Again, it was a really good video, I'm just not smart. I feel like I'm probably annoy I'm gonna annoy people because a lot of people who've watched this probably understand what it's actually saying. <laughs> math probably math problem no one can solve exists. Me, finally I'm not the only one who is bad at math. Okay, so maybe there are some people like me then. Nice work Soviets you can't make. But yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this reaction. Again, it was a live one, and I enjoyed it. I might start doing more live reactions in the future. It's a lot less lonely for me. It is a lot less lonely because reaction videos, I love doing them, but sometimes I'm at home for hours seeing no one. And it's just a bit of an interactive experience. But yeah, we'll see in future. Hopefully this goes down well. Maybe in future the the um, live reactions will be on videos that I sort of understand a bit more, so it'll be a lot more enjoyable. Maybe you did enjoy this one, but... I'll just have to see how it goes down. But yeah, until next time, like, subscribe. Peace.